Imagine a world where energy is not continuous but comes in a tiny indivisible packet. This revolutionary idea forever changed how we understand the universe, laying the foundation for quantum physics. In this video, we will dive into Max Planck's groundbreaking discovery, the quantum of energy. We will explore how this concept emerged from the mysteries of black body radiation and paved the way for modern physics. Get ready to challenge everything you thought you knew about energy, light, and the fundamental reality of nature. At the end of the 19th century, physics consisted essentially of classical mechanics and classical mechanics or classical physics, such as the theory of electromagnetism and thermodynamics. Back then convinced many people that the ideal description of nature had been reached. It appeared that the theories of electromagnetism and thermodynamics, which are the theories of matter and radiation, could be used to explain all non-physical phenomena. However, classical physics, which had remained almost unchallenged, faced a significant challenges at the start of the 20th century to explain several microscopic phenomena. Let me mention only one of these microscopic phenomena, which is the black body radiation. And to those who are not familiar with the black body radiation, well, the term simply is to describe the relationship between temperature of an object and the wavelengths of the electromagnetic radiation it emits. The more the object gets heated, the more it radiates heat energy to the surroundings. This heat energy is transferred by waves, whose wavelengths and frequencies depends on the object's temperature. For example here, this metal rod here, as it absorbs light that comes from the sun, it warms up and thus emits electromagnetic waves as heat to the surrounding environment. This emitted radiation called black body radiation, and it was a challenge back then that paved the way for seeking new ideas out of the box by scientists. The first breakthrough made by Max Planck in 1900. This happened when Max Planck introduced the idea of quantum of energy. He was trying to explain the phenomena of black body radiation. Well, the Max Planck breakthrough didn't come by coincidence, because prior to Max Planck findings, there were Lord Riley and Sir James Jeans who introduced their law, which called Riley Jeans Law. It describes the electromagnetic radiation made by black body. But scientists back then noticed that Riley Jeans Law and other classical theories of the day were unable to accurately predict the amount of radiation a black body would produce at different wavelengths particularly at shorter wavelengths or high frequencies. This means Riley Jeans law was only able to predict intensity of radiation of larger wavelengths and its results match experimental results. But when it comes to radiation of shorter wavelengths, it fails and gives inaccurate results that do not match with experimental results. So Blank searched for a theory that accurately describes the radiation emitted by a black body across all wavelengths from gamma rays to radio waves, and its results match experimental results. And in order to do so, he came up with an idea saying that energy isn't exchanged continuously, but rather in fixed amounts, which he called quanta or quantum. Blank argued that the energy exchange between light and matter could only happen or exchange in specific chunks or discrete, determined only by integer multiples of HF which he called the energy of quantum, where H is the fundamental constant called Planck's constant, and F is the frequency. Notice that I will use F and V interchangeably for the frequency. And if you're wondering how he calculated his constant, then I have put a resources on how Planck's constant is drift in the video description below, as it is essential for understanding the motion of atoms and subatomic particles, as well as how modern electronics operate. Going back to the part where energy can only be measured in integer multiples of h, v, well, for simplicity, let me break this into two simple steps. First, let us know the meaning of discrete, and secondly, we will see the meaning of n in Blank's equation. Starting with the meaning of discrete, well, discrete means separated or something that could be counted, which is the opposite to continuous. For example, the number of students in a class is discrete number. We can't say two students, but we cannot say 2.5 students. On the other hand, the student's height is continuous, 
and it could be 1.5 meters, 1.3 meters. So the number of students in a class could only be integer multiples from 1, 2, 3, 4 to n. But the student's height can be continuous like 1.5 meters and so on. So the same thing here applies to energy. It comes in discrete multiples of hv. As we cannot have 1.5 students in a class, we also cannot have energy fractions like 1.5 hv, only integer multiples of hv. For example, hv1, hv2, hv3 to hvn. And why is this? Because the energy exchange between matter and radiation directly depends on the frequency. And we will not have a frequency unless we have a complete cycle or a complete wave. So every time we have a complete wave, then we have a frequency. And it is a separated package of energy, one quantum, that is equal to hv. And half frequency means no wave and thus no energy. Moving to the next part, the meaning of n in Planck's equation. Well, n is simply the energy level if we're talking about atoms. But talking about radiation or waves in general means the mood or the pattern of frequency that we want to calculate it is energy. But in order to understand Blank's idea here, for n as the mood or the pattern of frequency, let us walk through the cavity blackboard experiment that Blank's used to explain the puzzling behavior of radiation and show that energy is quantized. A cavity blackbody is like a box that operates as a light capture. Incident rays entering through a tiny hole, then they reflect on the internal surface of the cavity. Since the cavity surface already has a high emissivity, then the incident radiation is partially absorbed every time it reflects on the cavity surface. But before we see the moods or the pattern of frequency, let me highlight one thing here. In order for a wave to fit or to be reflected inside a cavity black body or a box, then it is wavelengths should equal two times the length of the box or lens of the box equal half the wavelengths. So to understand these patterns of frequencies or moods, let us imagine them as standing waves created by rocks tied between two poles. So for the first mood, the wave looks like a half wave. The wavelength lambda is equal two times L or two times the distance between the two poles or two times the length of the cavity box. This can be seen if one continues the wave out to x equal to L or two times the distance between the two poles to obtain one complete cycle of the sine wave. But in the case of the cavity, the wave will be observed by the other surface of the cavity before it will complete the full cycle. And for the second mood, where n equal 2 or the energy level equal 2, the wave will be reflected with high frequency. Where there are two nodes, one where the rope connected and the second where the wave amplitude is zero. So here the energy of the second mood is higher than the mood 1 or n equal 1 because the frequency is higher. And for the third mood where n equal 3, we have three nodes, one where the rope connected and two where the wave amplitude is zero. Here we have high energy because the frequency is increased. So we notice here is that the first energy level or the first mood where n is equal 1 has the lowest energy level and the number of moods only comes in integer multiples for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 infinity actually we can fit infinite number of waves in a cavity black body so the number of moods is integer multiples by the way the same concept applies to atoms in case you are wondering in atoms where we have energy levels and each energy level has a unique frequency pattern or a mood. Electrons that are close to the nucleus have the least amount of energy. As you go further from the nucleus, electrons at higher energy levels have more energy. So in general, this is the idea of N or the energy level in Max Planck equation. So for more simplicity and combining N with Planck's equation here, let us assume that we have a light bulb that radiates light continuously. Let us assume that the energy radiated from the second energy level, then the energy carried by the wave of the light of this bulb, then it will be in chunks or separated packets that are equal to HV or HF. Each energy packet of HV here will be transferred or exchanged when the wave oscillates complete cycle. 
as the wave oscillates continuously, the total energy carried by the wave continuously is equal to h or Planck's constant times summation of all frequencies. And this means we have a set of separated chunks of energy. h1 is equal to hv or hf. Think of it as if the hv here is the building block of the energy of the waves and light in general. H -E -H -V here is a single building block of the wave. So in conclusion here, Max Planck made a brilliant discovery that changed our understanding of physics. He found that energy is in exchange continuously but rather in fixed amounts, which he called quanta. And that's where the term quantum of energy came from. Alright everyone, thank you for watching and if you like my explanation, please hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get to see the next upcoming videos. Thank you.